Hi, welcome to episode 51 of Pink's Picks Recommendations from a Semi-Retired English Teacher. The girls in the Stilt House and Call Your Daughter Home are debut Southern fiction titles both set in the early 1920s featuring powerful female friendships forged across racial and socioeconomic boundaries. Kelly Mustian's girls are teenaged Ada Morgan and Matilda Patterson who meet just as Ada's drunken abusive father is setting fire to the shed where Ada is sleeping. Mustian writes that the setting of this book was the setting of her childhood. The story was inspired by an image she had of rubbing chalk over worn tombstones with her sister during their youth. She wanted the Mississippi landscape, both physical and cultural, to convey something universal. The contrast between beauty and brutality inherent in our world and sometimes ourselves. The beauty includes the kindness of strangers, Spanish moss, giant bald cypress trees, and a sky dressed for sunrise in streaks of pink and gold. Brutality involves violence, betrayal, corruption, desecrated graves, animal traps, rattlesnakes, and copperheads. Deb Spira's call was inspired by relatives. She was haunted by family hardships and how connected we are to the natural world and what lies beyond. Call is set from August to October of 1924 in Branchville, South Carolina. Via first person rotating narration, Spira separates and combines the stories of Annie, the wealthy Cole family matriarch for whom in one small hour of one insignificant day, everything she held dear was destroyed. Retta, the best cook in the county whose passionate devoted marriage to Odell is enviable by all. And Gertrude, the wise but uneducated orphan who says, none of us get what we deserve. We make the best of what we got. Though each novel has its own very distinctive narrative, the parallels between the two proliferate with each chapter. Beyond the 1920s South setting, in both pieces there's a swamp. In Faulkner-esque fashion, Darkest of deeds transpire beyond the periphery of civilization where cicadas scream, bullfrogs holler, and leeches are as big as baby garter snakes, and evil lurks just beneath the surface and beyond the rustling of trees. In both books, there are similar character constructs, motherless protagonist, oxymoronic, childless mothers, ubiquitously respected midwives, abusive fathers, kindly strangers, and characters named Gertrude. Mustian and Spera employ the same plot devices, murder and manslaughter, life-changing letters, catastrophic weather, and sewing as a life-saving vocation. The authors also make comparable stylistic choices, flashbacks for character development, lyrical prose, Mustian, with clever alliteration, inventive similes, single word sentences, litote, and euphemisms. Spera, with near rhyme, pervasive aural and olfactory imagery. Both use anaphora, clothing motifs, vivid visual imagery, especially describing the landscape, and pay an almost Chekhovian homage to trees. Thematically, the novels share poverty, wealth, loss and struggle, racism, childbirth, hunger, religion, and defining family. As Ada says in Stilt House, 
All we needed to get along in life was a true connection to one person. My only issue with either story is an editor problem, which I sadly have found in the last several books I've read. In Call, there is an extraneous the on page 48, and in Stilt House on page 260, there is dialogue attributed to a newborn. Pardon me while I remove the steak from this English teacher's telltale heart. Apologies to Poe. Those infractions aside, these new novelists have yet another parallel. Parallel, an accolade, or A, from me. Yay! Next time, I will be discussing incarceration settings, finding fish, and the Nickel Boys. Until then, stay safe, be healthy, and by all means, do your homework. Bye-bye.